Hello students, in this video we'll discuss equicontinuity. A family of functions script f such that these functions f are mappings from a set a into r so our family looks like is called equicontinuous if for every epsilon greater than zero there is a delta such that, such that what? Here's our equicontinuity criterion. The criterion is the same as ordinary continuity, such that if x minus y is less than delta, this implies that f of x minus f of y is less than epsilon. This has to be true for all x and y in the set A, for all x and y in the set A, and for all functions in the class for every f in this class over here. So that's what the definition of equicontinuity is, okay? So it's for a family of functions. So let me show you an example of something which is not equicontinuous and a family of function which is equicontinuous, okay? So here's an example. So the family of functions x to the power n, n goes greater than or equal to one, is not equicontinuous, is not equicontinuous on zero, one. Why not? So this is a non-example of equicontinuity, so why not? So let me let eps take epsilon to be one half, and then consider points of the form, consider points, let's say a n, a n, which is one minus one over n, right? And so these points, so a n, a n minus one, is just equal to the how how far are these points away from one? They are one over a one over n away from one. And let's look at the difference of f of a n minus f of one. Okay? Well, f of a n is going to be what? This is going to be one minus one over n to the power n minus one. Okay? And as n goes to infinity, this tends to 1 over e. So for n sufficiently large, for n large enough, this is bi strictly bigger than, because 1 over e is like 1 over 3, basically. So this is going to be bigger than, strictly bigger than 1 half if n is sufficiently large, n large enough. So as n goes to, inf as n goes to infinity, I'm violating this, con this condition over here. So it says these points are getting arbitrarily close to f of 1, but we're not continuous there. So this family is not equicontinuous. So that shows we're not equicontinuous because I found a sequence of deltas, namely these a n, such that the function value f of a n minus f of that point 1, we're not. And so that violates the condition for every x and y in the set 0, 1. OK, so this fun that family is not equicontinuous. But what is an example of an equicontinuous family? So here's an example of an equicontinuous family. Example. If fn converges uniformly to f on 0, 1, and the fn are continuous, then the family fn, then fn, n goes from 1 to infinity, is equicontinuous, is equicontinuous. Okay. Now, how can we see that? Well, since the set is 0, 1, the, the key feature here is that this is a compact set. 0, 1 is compact, OK? So in other words, these functions fn are all uniformly continuous, right? So let's let epsilon be greater than 0. And then pick n such that if n and m are bigger than or equal to this number n, then f n of x minus f m of x is less than epsilon for m and n in this range for all x in 0, 1, for all x in 0, 1. We can do this, of course, because the sequence converges uniformly. So over here, I'm using uniform convergence. So we're using uniform convergence. OK, good. And so now, up to this value n, since I have a finite, since this n is a finite number, we can find by the uniform continuity that 
They're using the fact that they're continuous on a compact set, so they're uniformly continuous. For every one less than or equal to j less than or equal to n capital, what can we say? We can say that fj of x, there exists a delta, that you're going to do, there exists a delta, And that delta exists, that's the same delta for every one of these j's, such that fj of x minus fj of y is going to be less than epsilon over 3 if x minus y is less than delta, right? So f1, for example, is uniformly continuous. I can make that happen. f2, f3, f4, f5, f6, all the way up to fn are uniformly continuous. So for each one of these j's between 0 and as long as it's a finite number of them, and this n is a fixed finite number, I can make this less than epsilon over 3. Now, I can use this condition over here. I should actually put this. Let me make this an epsilon over 3 to make my arguments balance out correctly. OK, so we'll make an epsilon over 3. Now what I like to do is I like to estimate for any so this condition, uh, this is good, right? This is, so I need to estimate, I need to find an estimate like this for any n past this range over here. So let's look at fn. So let's suppose that n is bigger than or equal to, if n is bigger than or equal to n capital, let's estimate fn of x minus fn of y, assuming that x minus y is less than this delta, right? So what can we do over here? We can throw in an n, for example, right? Because I know that that condition is satisfied over there. So let's add and subtract in fn of x and fn of y, right? So this is equal to fn of x plus minus fn capital of x plus minus fn capital of y minus fn of y, OK? And so now what can we say over here? So I can say now that, for example, that this fn minus so I have a couple terms that we're going to look at over here. So we have three terms. We're going to have the f n of x minus f n capital of x. That's good. Then we'll have an f n capital minus f n of y. Then we'll have one of these terms over here. We'll have an f n capital of x minus f n capital of y. And finally, we'll have an f n capital of y minus f little n of y. Like that. Okay? Now I have these three terms, so how am I going to estimate these three terms over here? Well, what can we say about this term over here? This term over here, since we're in this regime, since n is bigger than, these are valid for n bigger than or equal to n, that's less than epsilon over 3. This term over here is less than epsilon over 3 by the uniform continuity of that guy. And this term over here is less than epsilon over 3, but again, by, the, um, by, the assumption, by this assumption over here, by the uniform conversion. So all three of those things are epsilon over 3, epsilon over 3, epsilon over 3, so it's less than epsilon. So in other words, I've just proven that fn of x minus fn of y is less than epsilon for any n bigger than or equal to n capital, but x minus y is less than delta, and that proves the uniform continuity of the family. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.